Hello and welcome to today's video where I'm going to be reading from the 2008 best-selling novel, Pure Murder. This book was based off of a real-life event of 14-year-old Jennifer Lee Ertman and 16-year-old Elizabeth Christine Pena. Chapter 1 Jennifer Ertman Jennifer Ertman was born on August 15, 1978, to Sandra and Randy Ertman. The Ertmans were ecstatic at the birth of their child because they were not sure if they would ever be able to conceive since Sandra was on the wrong side of 35. Baby Jennifer was the Ertmans own personal little miracle. Sandra described her only child as real sensitive, modest, funny. To her mother, Jennifer was more a child than teenager. She still seemed to act more like a young girl than a budding teenager. She liked to play, she had a baseball card collection. Her father also said that she developed a good sense of humor at an early age and that she had the best laugh. Her mother spoke about how Jennifer tended to act younger with the kids in her neighborhood than with her friends at school. She would ride her go-kart or bicycle down the street. She used to pull her wagons down the street with Ishmael, a boy down the block that she grew up with and his family. As Jennifer got older, she kept her more childlike side out of view of her high school friends. When she went to school, she didn't let her friends know that she did that at home. She tried to act more like a teenager. The Ertmans added that she was always a good kid. We were firm with her when she was growing up, Randy recalled. We taught her to never lie, cheat, or steal, and to treat everyone with respect. Randy added, as long as she never lied to me, I didn't have to worry. She never lied to me, so I never had to worry. Randy recalled yelling at her only three times in his entire life. He felt he never really had to raise his voice to her. We only had one child, and we spoiled her, but she had rules, and she had to live by them. Jennifer was always a very modest girl. She loved to swim, however she was not thrilled about displaying her body in front of others. Her mother remembered, in the summertime, when she went swimming, I bought her a big baggy cover-up to put on over her bathing suit when she got out of the swimming pool. Jennifer loved to swim, but she did not like to prance around in front of other pool goers. Her mother said she would even wear the cover-ups in the swimming pool. Jennifer also wore long baggy denim shorts that came down to her knees. Whenever she lay out by the swimming pool, she stayed away from the short shorts. She also never wore a sleeveless shirt. She dressed for comfort, her mother declared, and she dressed baggy because she didn't like anything tight. Jennifer was also not too big on boyfriends. She had friends that were boys, her mother clarified, but she did not have any boyfriends. Jennifer still seemed to retain some of her younger child mentality when it came to boys and girls. She didn't like boys to touch her at all. Jennifer was proud to be a virgin. Indeed, it was her intention not to surrender her virtue until she met the right man and married him. Her virginity was her badge of honor and something she was determined to keep until the moment was perfect. Sandra had noticed certain changes in her daughter in the previous months. To her, it seemed as if Jennifer was slowly breaking out of her little girl phase and beginning to grow into being a teenager. Jennifer used to wear berets in her hair all the time. However, she began to take them out so she could mimic the hairstyles worn by the actresses on the popular nighttime soap opera Beverly Hills 90210. It's what all the girls at Waltrip High School were doing and she decided it was time to fit in. Jennifer also began to wear more jewelry. She had her ears double pierced and on top of one ear she had tiny diamond studs. She wore tiny dime sized hoop earrings on the bottom. She also wore two long gold rope chains, one with the letter J on the end. The young girl wore a total of eight rings on her fingers including two J rings and one E ring. Jennifer also began to put on makeup even though her parents assured her she was beautiful without it. 
Despite her newer leanings towards more mature decorations, Jennifer also wore Walt Disney Goofy Watch, which was a gift from her parents from the previous Christmas. She was not entirely ready to give up her childhood. There was also another overt sign that the Ertman's baby daughter was growing up. When she turned 13, she asked her parents for her own set of house keys. It was not for sneaky, ulterior motives. The Ertmans had two doors in the back of their home. One was the regular door, and the other was a door made of metal burglar bars, which were necessary because they lived on a nice street in one of the lower quality areas of the Heights. Jennifer wisely said, Mom, can I have my own set of keys so I don't have to keep bothering you? Sandra believed her daughter had proven she was responsible enough, so she had an extra set of keys made for her. The Ertmans also purchased a unique gift for their daughter that showed that she was quickly growing up, a pager. Jennifer received the Southwestern Bell pager for Christmas in 1992. Sandra was reluctant to give it to her at first. During the 90s, pagers had a stereotypical connotation as a tool for drug dealers. Jennifer insisted she wanted one because it was a way to keep in touch with her friends. This was before the mass proliferation of cell phones. Sandra and Randy discussed the issue with Jennifer and the couple decided that because Jennifer was now attending Waltrip High School, she would not be in the Heights area where they lived as much. The family agreed it would be a smart purchase, so they bought her one. Sandra actually felt better about it because now she knew she could get in touch with her daughter much quicker in the event of an emergency. Thursday, June 24th, 1993, 4 p.m., Erdman Residence, East 25th Street, Houston, Texas. Sandra walked into her daughter's bedroom. Jennifer was getting ready to visit her best friend, Elizabeth Pena. Sandra glanced at her daughter, who was standing next to a mirror, brushing her hair. She was amazed at how much her daughter had grown, and she was proud of what a wonderful person she was turning out to be. Jennifer made straight A's in school, had nice friends, never got into trouble, and loved her parents. Dad's taking you over to Elizabeth's, Sandra informed her daughter. It was usually her mother who drove Jennifer everywhere. I'm going over to Apple Tree to pick up some groceries. Okay, Mom. Jennifer acknowledged while continuing to brush her hair. I love you, honey. Sandra walked towards her daughter. I'll talk to you later. The mother leaned over and gave her daughter a peck on the cheek. I love you too, Mom. Jennifer smiled as her mom exited her bedroom. Sandra felt safe about letting her daughter go out for the night with friends. Jennifer had her pager and also cash in her purse. Her mother always left $35 on Jennifer's dresser every Thursday for allowance. Jennifer also received the same amount on Sundays and always kept a $10 bill in her pants pocket in case of an emergency or if she needed to call a taxi cab. Sandra made sure her daughter knew that if she ever needed a ride home, all she had to do was get to a payphone and call her parents. They would come to get her, no matter the situation. Sandra left her home feeling upbeat. She knew her daughter was a good girl and knew how to stay out of trouble. Randy marveled at how close the two ladies in his life were. He watched as Sandy and Jenny communicated more I love yous without verbalizing them. They shared a unique and special bond that only a mother and daughter could experience. Jennifer and her dad left 15 minutes later. Randy dropped Jennifer off at Elizabeth Pena's house on Lamont Lane, approximately four and a half miles away from their home. Jennifer did not lean over to give her father a kiss goodbye. She had recently gotten out of the habit due to embarrassment, being a teenager and all. Be home by midnight, her father reminded her. I will, Dad. I love you. Jennifer said goodbye. I love you too, honey. Randy responded as he drove off. The self-described overprotective father did not like to leave his daughter on her own. However, he knew she was growing up. <laughs>